Mother Miranda, principal of the school, headmistress Mrs. Alok Shi, um, teachers and dear students. Um, I wanted to say a few things. I'm not sure what the format is, uh, but I was at a model United Nations recently in Mumbai at the Dhirubhai Ambani School and they did a good job. You appear to be doing even a better job. So that's good to know. Thank you. So let me begin by underlining the importance of multilateral diplomacy and UN. Since you're having a model UN, you might as well know why it is important. One of the previous speakers, a student, actually talked about it, and I'd like to pick up on that one. Second, a few rules of the game, a few rules that you should follow when you actually negotiate at a multilateral forum. And finally, just a couple of minutes on what India's interest is. If you're going to represent India at the UN, you should have a clear idea of what is India's fundamental interest, okay? So if this sounds okay, let me begin with um, really the importance of multilateral diplomacy and UN. Most of the issues facing humanity today are either climate change, terrorism, or cybersecurity. These are the three important challenges facing humanity today. And trust who's going to solve these problems. It's not Procter and Gamble, it's not Citibank, it's not McDonald's, it's not any private organization that's going to solve this problem. It's going to be the state. It is going to be multilateral cooperation between states. So I urge all of you to think of a career in the state because you can sell as many toothpaste as you want and as many perfume bottles that you want. It's not going to make the world a better place. So I would say to begin with, most of you thinking of being the change agents of tomorrow, you should really think of a career in the state. So that's the first point I'll make. The second point I will make is that the rules of multilateral United Nations is the following, in my view. The first one is never allow the best to be the enemy of the good. Okay? In a multilateral negotiation, you cannot get into the UN saying it is either my way or the highway. You have to negotiate. You have to compromise. So if you have a position, have a fallback position so that you can negotiate. Never allow the best to be the enemy of the good. That's the first rule. The second rule is if you actually find yourself in a hole, stop digging. If you actually find yourself in a hole, your first instinct should be stop digging, otherwise you'll go deeper in the hole. In other words, if a particular position doesn't work, you should go back to the drawing board and change it. That's what I mean. So if you're a negotiator, and you find that your position is not helping you accomplish your goals, change it. Go back to the drawing board. Think about what went wrong and change it. So that's the second. The third thing is really the, probably the most important. So you are aware of what the group does. Sincerely, sincerely hoping none of you had to join the group yet. But anyway, good, good. But Alcoholics Anonymous begins with what is known as a serenity prayer. And you should make it a point to read that prayer. I will, of course, say it just now. The serenity prayer starts like this. It says, Oh God, give me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can. And most importantly, the wisdom to know the difference. And this is extremely important, no matter what you are. I had that as a guiding objective in the 36 years I spent in the Foreign Service. If you're going to fight the wrong battles in your life, you know, you're going to end up absolutely as a loser. You have to have an understanding. You must, of course, be a change agent. But think of what you can change and what you cannot change. And there are differences in your position 
you will have some things that you can change and some things that you can't change and you need to know the difference. So this is the most important rule for me in the UN. But really what I wanted to speak about was India's national interest. India's interest is not to get into the UN Security Council. It is not to get into the nuclear suppliers group. It is not to be a leading power. All these things to me are irrelevant. So when you go to the model UN, don't go pretend saying India is a big power. We want to be on the UN Security Council. We want to be on the nuclear suppliers group. All these things don't make sense. What does make sense for India and if it wants to be all of this, that is leading power, great power, UN Security Council membership, you have a country of 1.3 billion. The Sustainable Development Goal report of the UN says there are only two regions of the world where there is massive extreme poverty. One is Sub-Saharan Africa, no prices for guessing. The second is South Asia. And South Asia is a decent way of saying India. Because really, what are the numbers we are talking about when we talk of Bhutan and Pakistan and Bangladesh? It is India. Now, this should make every Indian feel somewhat humble. At least I was. I met Kofi Annan and Kofi Annan used to tell me, I'm sorry, I've been to China many times. I don't see extreme poverty in China. And he's right. I now travel to China very often. You see poverty everywhere. I'm talking extreme poverty. And if you want to know the difference, Google the Oxfam initiative of multi-dimensional index of poverty. That's the way it's now being interpreted. Take a look at it. It's only India and Africa which have large numbers of people in extreme poverty. India has a number which is close to 350 million people living in extreme poverty. And for me, India's national interest is defined as follows. I call it the Mahatma Gandhi test. Okay, I call it the Mahatma Gandhi test. It's very simple. If you want to take a decision as a policy maker, you have to make sure in the first instance that the decision benefits the 350 million people living in extreme poverty. If not, at least it should be neutral to this category of people. In other words, you shouldn't take a decision which leaves this 350 million people worse off. They are already les miserables, okay? So you can't leave them worse off. If you have a conscience as an Indian, you cannot take any decision. One of the decisions we have taken yesterday, we have not joined the RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, and uh, Prime Minister Modi used the word Gandhi talisman. What he means is this, what I'm telling you. If you join RCEP, and if cheap Chinese imports are going to put these 350 million people out of business, that's just too bad, we can't afford it. I am not bothered about you. You are lower middle class, upper middle class. I don't give a damn. I certainly don't give a damn about Amitabh Bachchan and Mukesh Ambani. But I am extremely concerned as a policy maker, civil servant, diplomat, about this category of people, 350 million. We don't have a social safety net in this country. We don't have the government providing cradle to death things like health, education, sanitation for everybody. We don't. We've just started. So I believe if you are negotiating at the UN, your real objective at the back of your mind should be at the least don't hurt this category of 350 million people. If you can do something which will benefit them, bravo, very good. You should go ahead and do it. But that's not always possible. But at any rate, I am clear about one thing. If you take a decision that leaves them worse off, you're not an Indian and you don't have a right to represent India at the UN. That is the mantra I followed. I mean, I was India's negotiator for intellectual property rights at the WTO. 
and we didn't accept patents because we felt that you cannot patent turmeric. Haldi turmeric is well known in villages for its antiseptic qualities. How can you patent something which is absolutely available to everybody? You can't. How can you patent the neem that people use for toothbrush? You can't. You simply can't in a country like India. And if you patent all the pharmaceuticals and drugs, then the cost of paracetamol that you are getting in India for something like 10 rupees will be 500 rupees. 500 rupees is what I pay. I must tell you the story. My first posting <coughs> was to a place uh, called Geneva. So within two days of my arrival in Geneva, I walked into a pharmacy and I said, can I have two tablets of paracetamol? And the pharmacist laughed at me and she said, where are you from? I said, I'm from India. She said, we give you packets of 24 tablets, take it or leave it. I said, I don't need 24 tablets. I don't get a headache every week. I get a headache once a year. I need two tablets. They wouldn't give me two tablets. It's either a pack of 24 and then you have strict expiry dates in those countries. So after one year, you just junk your 24, go buy another pack of 24. It's good for the drug companies, right? The other thing that you should be really careful. Be careful what you wish for in United Nations, in life in general. You may get it. You know what I'm saying? You should be careful what you wish for. Have you thought it through? your objectives, your negotiating objectives. I think we are in the middle of an extremely interesting phase in international relations. The unipolar moment led by the United States is over. We are moving towards a multipolar world. But you look at the irony of this. The world has become more multipolar, but the world is declining in terms of multilateralism. Do you see the contradiction? The world has become more multipolar, but multilateralism itself is declining. And that is something that I find difficult to reconcile. It does seem to me that uh, people like you who are interested in model UN, my real advice to you is you should keep looking at the Young Professionals Group exam of the UN and the World Bank. That is something that some of you smart kids should look for. The others, I think, should look to join the state, uh, foreign service, administrative service. These are the opportunities that you will get to change your country and change the world. Don't end up selling underarm lotion and perfumes. That's my mantra, okay? You can make a lot of money doing that. Do that if you want, and if that's what you want to do. But if you want to make a difference, I still think the state is back with a bang because all the problems of tomorrow can only be dealt with by the state. And God knows that in a country like India, we need a state. We are not yet at a stage where we can say we should shrink the state to irrelevance. That's not going to happen and I don't think that's the way to go. So once again, thank you for the attention and all the best to the Mountain